we greet you here from the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in the Archdiocese of Castri, St. Lucia. My name is Father Ignatius Dominic Savio Setut, and I will be your commentator for this afternoon's ordination ceremony. With me, the animator is Mrs. Marilyn John Mackey, who hails from the parish of the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Labry, the current assignment of our candidate today. It gives me great pleasure to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to this ordination to the sacred priesthood of Barnabas Yogilim, who hails from the Diocese of Boko in Nigeria. The candidate has completed his years of academic, human, pastoral, and spiritual formation in Nigeria. He arrived in the Archdiocese of Castries on July 22nd, 2019. He was assigned at the parish of Our Lady of the Assumption Sufre under the spiritual and pastoral supervision of Father Ignatius Dominic Savio Setut, Episcopal Vicar for Clergy, and Father Albert Aaron Smith, Vocations Director. After a six-month stint, the candidate was assigned to the parish of St. Joseph the Worker, Grosily, under the spiritual and pastoral supervision of Monsignor Michel Francis, Vicar General. His current assignment is the pastoral area of the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Labry, St. Francis Xavier Ogé, and Bas La Grasse, under the spiritual and pastoral supervision of Father Athanas Joseph, chairperson of the Presbyteral Council. On those of you here at the Cathedral the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, as well as those joining us on your virtual platforms. As we observe the second Sunday of Easter, commonly referred to as Divine Mercy Sunday. Today we are participating in a double event, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, and the ordination to the sacred priesthood of Reverend Deacon Barnabas Yogilim. As we recall the words of St. Thomas Aquinas, and I quote, mercy consists in bringing a thing out of non-being into being, unquote. We see this concrete reflection in the life of the church in St. Lucia and in particular, in the life of a young Nigerian. We are called upon, as a community of believers, to be witnesses to this great event and to dedicate ourselves individually and collectively to the total development of the Archdiocese and in particular, our priest designate. Today's liturgy presents us with challenges which we would do well to heed. Are we united in heart and soul? Do we believe that we are truly sons and daughters of God? Or are there still doubting Thomases among us? Brothers and sisters, I invite you to watch a short video that will provide us with some insights into the life of priest-elect. This poem, Hello Africa, 
is dedicated to Barnabas Yogilim, a Nigerian who was ordained to the diaconate on September 15, 2020 at the Church of Our Lady of the Assumption Soufrière in St. Lucia. He is in a race and is still running. Hello, Africa. You nurtured your son to be a missionary, instilling in him a caring mentality. You made him strong to endure adversity in a journey marked by faith and unpredictability. He has traveled far in his quest on the way to maturity. Sons of Africa are like hunting leopards, unafraid of the night. They roam the world away from their cradles, finding their lairs in faraway places among peoples of different faces. This adventurous son of Africa has come in a destined time to fear Helen's shores. To the land of the iguana and spectacular pitons. Here he will grow without forgetting his roots. In Nigeria's Middle Belt region and his tiv identity. Today, St. Lucy smiles and her bright light shines on a handsome tiv face radiating with joy, eyes gleaming with brightness, open wide, reflecting a soul in harmony with God. Hello, Africa. Once your heart bled in grief, like the sorrowful mother on Calvary, hurt by the shackles on the ankles of your daughters and sons in bondage. Today, a son of Nigeria's Middle Belt region stakes his claim on a serene Caribbean island. Slowly, his continent recedes behind him. From now on, he will massage his limbs in sulfur and lava. Eat green fig and salt fish, wet his feet in clear waters, sink or swim in the currents he will encounter and one day embrace la rose and la marguerite. Covered in Sahara dust, and bruised by hurricanes, he will grope for ancestral traditions and childhood attachments, things to keep and not to lose. When his spirits wilt and droop, what's deep inside will be decisive. This son of Africa has left home 
only to come home again. Africa has populated our islands in the Caribbean and staked a claim on our legacy and heritage. Today, a son of Africa in Nigeria's Middle Belt region strengthens these bonds by faith, adoption, and transculturation. The time for soul searching is over. Mother Africa has given her gift. A man with dreams who stands tall above the rest with his hope anchored and his face in the sun. Hello Africa, the final crossing is accomplished. Free from fear and past trepidation, he has found his passage in the diaconal way. Now the drumbeat has changed. No more tom toms, but steel drums. He is free to be by becoming what he is called to be. Hello, Africa. Today, hello signifies goodbye. Can a leopard change its spots? Can a Nigerian become Lucian? Who knows? Bye bye to Africa. You have not lost. You have given. The past is gone. The time of joy and laughter has come. Merci, Seigneur. Tout c'est ça ou à poison. Let's all stand and join in the hymn.
all join in the entrance hymn, All the Oof. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. So it was eight days later, the octave of Easter, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And that same peace Jesus offers us today, and in a very special way, as we gather to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday in liturgy here today, and the ordination of Deacon Barnabas Yorgilim. I wish to welcome all of you who have come to show your appreciation and your love for the deacon to be ordained priest. I heard the leader of the opposition is here. I welcome you. And any other dignitaries who may be here, I welcome you. You are all dignitaries. You're, we are all children of God when we are together in worship. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us recognize our sinfulness and ask God for mercy on this day of mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to life everlasting. Governing your people, make use of the ministry of priests, 
Grant a persevering obedience to your will, to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. This reading presents a model of what any Christian community should be, united in heart and soul, witnesses to the resurrection of Christ, and sharing their means with one another. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything that they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of the members was ever held in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them, to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord.
second reading is from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. John makes the point that through Christ's blood and sacrifice, and at the moment of Christ's death, the whole world is saved. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God. And whoever loves the Father that he that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do whatever he commands us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already become the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. In his gospel account, John depicts two scenes. Firstly, the first appearance of the risen Jesus to his disciples, and secondly, the familiar story of Thomas, who needs physical proof of Jesus' appearance. Let us all stand for the proclamation of the gospel. From the Holy Gospel according to John.
in the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The word. Brothers and sisters, at this time, the candidate will be called by Deacon Robert Harvey, the priest designate, Father Albert Aaron Smith, vocations director, will present the priest elect to the Archbishop. The Archbishop will examine the candidate's credibility for priestly ordination. Then we will have the consent of you, the people, and please follow on page three in your booklets. Your response will be, thanks be to God. Then thereafter, the homily will be delivered by the Archbishop, Most Reverend Robert Rivas, our Archbishop here in the Archdiocese of Castries, who is the main celebrant today. The 
let Barnabas Yorgilim, who is to be ordained priest, please come forward. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiring among the Christian people and upon recommendations of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, just a gentle reminder, may I invite you and ask you to kindly wear your masks. Thank you. that Christ is truly risen from the dead, we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. These words are taken from the Easter sequence, and I chose it because of the word mercy. Thy mercy show. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Easter is a season of joy. St. John tells us that the disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord on Easter Sunday evening. Today, we have three reasons for joy. First of all, it is the octave or eighth day of Easter. And we know from an ancient witness of faith in the Easter sequence that Christ is truly risen. This is good news. The second reason is that today is Mercy Sunday. And with our ancient witness of faith, we pray, Victorious King, thy mercy show. The third reason for joy is, today we are celebrating the ordination to the priesthood of Deacon Barnabas Yorgilim, a man of faith, zeal, and courage, who has left his home in Nigeria's Middle Belt region to become a priest in the Archdiocese of Castries in St. Lucia in the Caribbean, which is a long way from home. In this season of joy, we rejoice and are grateful for all God's mercies and blessings. Alleluia! Alleluia! Divine Mercy Sunday is also Love Sunday since mercy 
is another name for love. God has not held back in his love for us, and his mercy is infinite. In the Jubilee year 2000, Pope St. John Paul II designated the second Sunday of Easter, the octave of Easter, as Divine Mercy Sunday, because he wanted the whole world to be more aware of God's mercy, to practice mercy, and to be merciful as the Heavenly Father is merciful. In instituting Divine Mercy Sunday, the Pope said, Divine Mercy, this is the Easter gift that the Church receives from the risen Christ and offers to humanity at the dawn of the new millennium. Today the Lord shows us his glorious wounds and his heart, an inexhaustible source of light and truth, of love and forgiveness. Jesus said to St. Faustina, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I pour out a whole ocean of grace upon souls who approach the fount of my mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Let's cry for our world to be more merciful, to be a more merciful world. I would now like to reflect on what I call the many faces of the priest. I was at a priestly ordination once, and Archbishop Anthony Panton, a former Archbishop of Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago, began his homily by saying, my brothers, there are three things I want to say to you on your ordination day. Kindness, kindness, kindness. Be kind priests. Be kind to your people always. A kind attitude and an act of kindness go a long way. The more kind we are, the more accessible we are. Dear Barnabas, Barney, you're looking at me? Dear Barnabas, as a priest, be kind, gentle, and generous. Let kindness help define you as a priest. Kindness is a sister of generosity. Jesus said to, in Matthew 11:29, "Learn from me, for I am gentle, kind and humble of heart." I want you to check your pulse every day for kindness. Gentleness, humility, and generosity. Kindness is one of the compassionate faces of the priest. The priest is a man of the word. I have an icon in my chapel of Christ holding the scriptures in one hand and blessing with the other hand. Every time I pass it, I, I make the words of Psalm 118, verse 105, my prayer. May your words be a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. 
To be a man of the word, you need to live in close union and harmony with the word. You need to love the word and become familiar with the word. For Jeremiah the prophet, the word was his delight. He said when the word came to him, he devoured it. Your word, he said, was my delight, the joy of my heart. I want you, Barnabas, to make the word your delight and the joy of your heart. When you speak and the word and preach the word, ask the Holy Spirit to anoint the words that are on your lips so that they may be fruitful. The Eucharist will define who you are as a priest. When you take the bread and wine in your hands today for consecration, for the first time as a newly ordained priest, understand what that your life from now on is not yours to keep, but yours to give. What you do in memory of Christ must also be done in imitation of Christ. He gave his life for us. The Eucharist is for us the gift of his sacrificial love and self-giving. This is clearly another face of, face of the priest, a face of the, a man of the Eucharist who gives his life for others. Eucharist is gift and giving. Be joyful and generous in your giving. Every time you consecrate the bread, your life must be transformed by your becoming bread for others. Every time you consecrate the chalice, you must be ready to empty yourself and be willing to pour out your life in the service of others. Eucharist and washing feet are closely connected. In service and servant leadership, with Christ as your model and example, you will find your job description as a priest. You are called to serve as Jesus came to serve. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. As a man of the Eucharist who is called to serve, you must be the humble servant of all and not the boss. Eucharist is a sacrament of healing and unity. Benefit from the graces of the Eucharist in bringing healing to the broken, wounded, and hurting members of the body of Christ. Do not be afraid to be vulnerable, powerless, and to show your wounds as Jesus showed his wounds to his disciples. A wounded healer is full of compassion, understanding, and kindness. When we hide our wounds, we deprive others of a fountain of grace and healing. Sometimes we, in our woundedness, wound others rather than help them to heal. The priesthood is a channel of grace for building unity and communion, which are fruits of the Eucharist. 
on Divine Mercy Sunday, we see another face of the priest, the man of mercy. Mercy, which is the flower of love, is the greatest attribute of God. The priest is called to be a dispenser of mercy. God has given the priest a special role in his plan of mercy for sinners. We, his priests, are in his contact persons for bringing his mercy in a tangible way to sinners and those who cry for mercy. Dear Barnabas, cultivate a merciful heart, and as a priest, be a man of mercy. Be merciful as your Father is merciful. Luke 7, verse 36. Preach the gospel of mercy and compassion in season and out of season so that sinners may come to know how much God loves them and how unfathomable is his mercy. Priests who proclaim and extol my mercy, Jesus said to St. Faustina, the saint of divine mercy, I will give wondrous power. I will anoint their words and touch the hearts of those to whom they will speak. Maybe the everyday face of the priest is the face of gratitude. Can I see your gratitude face, Barnabas? Yes, we all have, we need to have gratitude faces. Always be thankful, Colossians 3.15. As a steward of the mysteries of God, teach your people gratitude by your example of graciousness and appreciation for all your gifts and blessings. When one is gifted, one needs to be gracious. Never behave as if you know everything and have the answer for everything. Be a good listener and collaborate with others in ministry. Avoid being a lone ranger. The priesthood is a gift. Your celibacy is a gift that frees you to be available in your service to others. For these gifts, be grateful to God. And be faithful to your call and vocation. Every day, be grateful and thankful to God for the people you serve. Embrace them as your brothers and sisters, and be a true father, brother, and friend to them. On Thursday, April 8th, 2021, Cardinal Kelvin Felix, Emeritus Archbishop of Castries, celebrated his 65th anniversary of priesthood. On June 27th this year, I will be celebrating the Golden Jubilee of 50 years of priesthood. On Thursday, April 8th, your countryman, Father Celestine, celebrated his 21st anniversary of priestly ordination. It shows that Africans and Caribbean men have endurance and can live out a priestly vocation to full fruition. Let this be an example for you. Today, 
the journey begins for you. It's a journey of a lifetime. Once you are ordained, you will be a priest forever. Thank you for your generosity and the sacrifice you have made in leaving home, family, and country in answer to your call to be a priest. May you be an inspiration for many young people in St. Lucia, both young women and young men, in discerning a call to the priesthood and the consecrated life. Welcome to the priestly fraternity and the clergy family. May your joy today be also the joy of the church in St. Lucia and your family in Nigeria. May your journey be faith-filled, joy-filled, spirit-filled, and life-fulfilling. May you truly be a son of consolation and encouragement for your Archdiocese of Castries. Shebefo pa laje. Be strong, Barnabas. Hold tight. Don't let go. I commend you to the care of Mary, mother of priests, Saint Joseph, the faithful and obedient servant of God, and Saint John de Vianney, patron saint of all priests. To God be the glory. Did I hear amen? Brothers and sisters, at this time, the candidate will be examined by the Archbishop regarding his intention for priestly ordination. You can follow this part on page three of your booklets. The candidate will make the promise of obedience to the Archbishop and his successors. The candidate will place his clasped hands into the hands of the Archbishop for the promise of obedience. During the litany of the saints which will follow, the candidate will prostrate in the main aisle as a sign of his total commitment and selfless giving. And we will all remain standing since today is Sunday and we are in the Easter season. We remain standing for the litany of the saints. My dear son, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention 
to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy as a worthy fellow worker with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ, the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on this his servant whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Sarah, 
Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Samuel, Ruth, David, and Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah. And Domine, Francis Savia Ignatius, Elizabeth and Catherine, we and Wenceslas. Son 
of the living God. Send your spirit. Confesses you. At this time, the Archbishop will lay hands on the head of the candidate individually in silence to confer the sacrament of holy orders. Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on the, this your servant the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. All the priests present will lay hands individually on the candidate. This is a fraternal gesture of sharing the, the priesthood with the candidate. This will be followed by the investiture with stole and chasuble. The archbishop will then anoint the candidate's hands, the palm of his hands, with the oil of sacred chrism. The Archbishop will present the candidate with the bread on a pattern and the wine in a chalice, which are pertinent symbols of the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you everything progresses. Through you all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Almighty, already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them. You chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their rank. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men and with them helped to rule with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also, upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of your fatherly plenty, of, of your, their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifice of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of, your, of our confession, through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made the, his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need. To exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this, your servant, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness, that he henceforth possess this office, which, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop, and by the, the example of his manner of life, may he instill right conduct. May he be worthy a worthy co-worker with our order so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, he, may he be faithful, a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourish from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May, they, may he be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to his care and for all the world. And so may 
the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Christ has no body now seated. but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. yours the eyes through which he looks, compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours.
The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. And now the Archbishop will give the keys of peace, the fraternal keys of peace to the newly ordained. The newly ordained priest will give the fraternal keys of peace only to the priests here at this ceremony. And he will greet the deacons later during the liturgy. At a priestly ordination, the newly ordained priest gives the keys of peace only to the priests. At a diaconate ordination, the newly ordained deacon gives the kiss of peace to the deacons. Today, the newly ordained priest will concelebrate at Holy Mass and will say part of the Eucharistic prayer that will be assigned to him. He will also distribute Holy Communion at the time of Communion. Church, behold Father Barnabas. We will now have the collection and the hymn is This is the Day.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day. Let us rejoice and be presentation of gifts as we sing Tut Sanuni. Thank you. 
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister to the holy altar, at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray that the labors of your servants may certainly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and, e and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by that wondrous design, were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are the new, they are to renew in his name the sacrifice of, hum of human redemption to set before your children the paschal banquet to lead your holy people in charity to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. And they, as they give up their lives for you, <clears throat> and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we are claimed.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that, may, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious Martha's, with Saint Lucy, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unhealth in hell. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our bishops. With the order of bishops, this 
your servant, who has been ordained today as a priest for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ, bring me to life. With him for communion is the covenant song.
Our meditation hymn is Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light of the Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants that, united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace 
of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. On behalf of Barrister Fabian Yogilin, the eldest of we, the siblings, I would like to express our utmost gratitude to your grace, Archbishop Robert Rivers O.P., the Vicar General, Monsignor Michel Francis, Monsignor Patrick Anthony Parba, Episcopal Vicar for Clergy, Father Ignatius Dominic Savio Situt, the Judicial Vicar, Father Dr. Joseph Raj, Chairperson Presbyteral Council, Father Althanas Joseph, local superiors of the different congregations, both male and female, here present, the Vocations Director, Father Albert Aaron Smith, priest, deacons, religious, distinguished invited guests, May I use this opportunity in a very special way to welcome the leader of the opposition, um, Philip J. Pierre. Thank you so very much. Today I was on the social media and I came across your page. I saw you posted a congratulatory message for me and praying for me on your Facebook. And I mentioned to somebody and he said, oh, look at it again on the Twitter. I cannot imagine. I thank you so very much for that benevolence. And I'm very happy for that kind gesture. Thank you so very much, sir. Also, His Lordship, Honorable Justice Rohan L. Philip, and his wife, Cyril. Thank you so very much. Media groups, brothers and sisters, dear people of God. I am so honored by God to be alive to see this dream of mine come true. I cannot express how grateful I am having you all here witnessing this great transformation of I becoming a Catholic priest. To you, your grace. It is with a heart filled with joy to be honored with the holy priesthood. My, long li my lifelong prayers are answered today by our beloved Lord, whose divine mercy we celebrate today. It has always been, Jesus, I trust in you for me, and today I have seen its manifestation in its fullest. More so, I thank in a very special way the parishes of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary Sufre, St. Joseph the Worker Groselet, and the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary Labri and their associate parishes. Permit me, Your Grace, to express my heartfelt gratitude to Fathers Kenneth Heike VC and Albert Aaron Smith, also, Seminarian Festus Iwagu, if not for their effort, I would not have been here today. I thank them most sincerely. Finally, I thank you, my distinguished invited guest, the altar servers, and all those assisting behind scene, the choir of the cathedral and Groselet parish, and the musicians. Thank you so very much, you sing beautifully. The ushers, the animator, the reader, the cantor, the library, you dancers, the media group, and Miss Joyce, Michelle, and her team of decorators, thank you so very much for your beautiful decorations. All those watching us via live streaming from different parts of the world, I wish to say thank you. Thank you so very much.
and God bless you abundantly. Please remember me in your prayers as I celebrate my first Mass at Our Lady of the Assumption Parish, Sufre, tomorrow, God's willing. Thank you so very much, Reverend Father Barnabas Yogili, for the family. Brothers and sisters, Father Barnabas Yogilim would like me to acknowledge some, very, some persons very dear to his heart who are following with us virtually today. His brothers, biological brothers, that is, Fabian and Philemon. His grandmother, Victoria Balove, Yohala, his aunts, Tabitha Atile, Elizabeth Gigi, Mary Yolaha, his uncle, Peter Appa, the clergy and religious from Bennu, the home state of the candidate, sorry, of the newly ordained priest, the clergy and religious from Abuja, clergy and religious from Lagos, the clergy and religious from Jos, the seminary classmates, Father Sylvester Dagin, former rector of St. Augustine Major Seminary in Jos, Father Leo Tena Ko, Father Timothy A.J., Father Thomas Omino, Father William Orby, Father Ronald Awuhi, all from the Diocese of Abuja. The local ordinary of the Diocese of Boko, where Father Barnabas hails, and also the Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Castina Ala. Most Reverend William Avenia, Father Innocent Jande, also from the Diocese of Boko, Father Isaac Doju, Director and Pastoral Agent of the Catholic Secretariat in Abuja, Father Jacob Atusi, Father Donald Ayonumbi, the Diocese of Boko. The classmates in philosophy of the year 2010 of the National Missionary Seminary of St. Paul in Abuja. The classmates in theology of the year 2015 of the St. Augustine Major Seminary in Jos. The clergy and religious from Cameroon. The clergy and religious from Rome. And we make special mention of Sister Comfort, Father Barnabas' biological sister, who is a religious from the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity of the Most Precious Blood of Jesus. Also from Italy, Father Joseph Shawunla, who is a relative, a blood relative of Father Barnabas. He is a religious priest from the congregation of the Somascan Fathers. In the United States of America, the clergy and religious there, from the Archdiocese of San Francisco in California, Father Raymond Tehumba, the Acruci priest, from the Diocese of Tucson, Arizona, Father Martin Amana Edoka, Father Samuel Jande, they are both Biakruchi priests from Tucson, Arizona. In the United Kingdom, the clergy and religious there, we make mention of Father Franklin Umekache Helu from the Most Holy Family RC Church, the Diocese of Wrexham. 
also from the Archdiocese of Southwark, London, Father Vincent Omo Father Vincent Omopak Omopako. We also make mention of all the clergy and religious in this diocese. If you are watching with us live stream, Father Barnabas Yogilim has asked me to acknowledge your presence, your prayers for him. May God bless you in virtual land. And now, Father Barnabas Yogilim will give his grace, Most Reverend Robert Rivas, his first blessing. It is a custom when a priest is ordained, he gives his first blessing to the bishop or the archbishop. Then after that, the clergy, we will all stand, and the congregation will kneel for the blessing of Father Barnabas Yogilim. Then after his grace will present the newly ordained to the congregation. Then his grace will announce the assignment of the newly ordained priest, Father Barnabas. And it is always uh, uh, something of um, in waiting to hear where will the new priest be ordained. So his grace will do that for us today. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. And now we invite the clergy to stand and the, the congregation to kindly kneel. Clergy, please stand, and the congregation, you will receive your blessing in kneeling thereafter. May the bless the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. Clergy, please sit. Congregation, kneel for your blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. My sisters and brothers, I have an envelope here for Father Barnabas, but it's sealed. So 
So how am I going to tell, tell him where he is going? I can't open it. Anyway, Father Barnabas, will you come, please? And Father Barnabas has spent his diaconal um, time in the parish of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Our Lady of the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Labory. And the good sense was that he should continue there for his first assignment of the priesthood. So, Father, here is your assignment. And will you give one to your parish priest? So he is going to be the assistant priest of that pastoral area of Labory Oje. And for those of you who are far away, like in uh, Nigeria and other parts of the world who are following us today, um, that is a lovely parish in the Archdiocese, and there are lovely people there, so your Barnabas will be well taken care of. I have to thank somebody else. Who are you thanking? We would also like to extend our thanks to CTBS and the live streaming group, um, Ronald, Richmond, Arthur, um, Glenn, um, Mr. Sentoma, um, that's it. Thank you so much for your technical expertise in covering this ceremony today live stream so that it could have reached as far as Africa and the United States and Europe and the UK. Thank you very much for your expertise. And I have one, one more thing for Father Barnabas. Uh, this is a gift from the Archbishop and CTBS of Hello Africa. He could send it all over the world now. What did you think of it? Wonderful, wonderful. Go and give it to me. I, I forgot to thank one person. That is Reverend Father Wilson Fernando. Father Wilson Fernando, you will see his work of art very soon. He designed my bookmark and the invitation card I shared to you. So thank you very much, Father, for that great job. And all these posters you see in the church, the banners, were all designed by Father F um, Wilson. Let's give him a round of applause. And before the final blessing, I see the, the, the bonbon was brought out. It needs to be Beni now. So let's bless, the, let's bless the, the cakes, which will be shared out after Mass. Lord, we thank you for your generosity and kindness to us. We thank you for providing for us so many good things. And on this feast, in as one of our ways of saying thank you, we want to share this bread, this sweet bread, this cake, bonbon. We ask you to bless it so that all those who share in it and partake of it will know that it comes from your greatness and your goodness to us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, 
protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. May he make you a servant and a witness in the world to divine charity and truth and a faithful minister of reconciliation. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let me thank you for your presence and participation. Continue to observe the protocols. Journey's mercies as you make your way to your respective homes. And I would like to tell His Grace, thank you for allowing Father Barnabas to remain in the lab. We will take care of him. Our recessional hymn is the song.